Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the live stream. Oh, come on, keep up. <clears throat> it's a it's a lag. I gotta wait for it to so I can hit my volume. There we go. Awesome. We are back, and I am so sorry that I have been away, but <clears throat> the studying has been killing me. Yep. But I have my my honey badgers here with me and got some uh, maybe piglet and 3d will join us but <clears throat> I've got miss Mickey how are you ma'am I'm fine how are you I'm good and mom slayer is in the house <laughs> hey hey <laughs> yep so the other what is our let's see well first of all let me see who we got in the in the um, in the live chat. Branscombe Farms, how are you? Living and learning life, how are you? Piglet's in there. Hopefully, she'll be able to join us. Prepper X, how are you, honey, honey? Hey, Jay, how are you? Who else we got? Piglet's in there. <clears throat> Hopefully, she'll be able to join us. Prepper X, how are you, honey, honey? Hey, Jay, how Let's are see. you? Oxjaw, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. I think that's all we got right now. Oh, Miss Pat Skelton. Fabulous. Hey, everybody. Missed y'all. We missed you, too. Golly. I am telling you what. It's been crazy the last last couple of weeks. But um, hopefully we'll be back on a regular schedule now. Um, I'm done with the studying. The only thing I have left to do is to take the national um, test and once I pass that I'm done for good. Hey Old Town Homestead, how are you? <clears throat> Piglet, I sent you a link. Um, there you are. Awesome, awesome. Hi Piglet. Hi, how are you ladies? <clears throat> Hi Piglet. I am, I am wonderful. How are you my friend? I was on the Yahoo thing going, something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Hang out. Yep. Hey, Ryder Dust, how are you? So, um, but the other day, um, we were chatting, and Miss Piglet had a question um, about freeze drying being better than other ways of preserving food. So, we got into this long discussion about the differences and the advantages and disadvantages of both of all three freeze drying versus canning versus dehydrating. Now, 3D Tripper, um, she is dehydrating up a storm. Um, you know, if y'all have not checked her out, go check out her channel. That is the dehydratingest person I've ever seen. Well, and then Mom Slayer. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it kind of died after the corn was done this morning. But oh, no. I think the bread and butter pickles did it in. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> your, your freeze dryer, your, I mean, your dehydrator, you killed your dehydrator? Yes. She's already planning on taking it apart and fixing it. Oh no! Yeah, you know, she just put. Are the door you kidding on me? Today. She didn't have time to mess with it. Oh. Yeah. She's a mechanic oh, my part goodness. of this group. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Mom Slayer cans up a storm, and I have got so much catching up to do. Y'all go check out Mom Slayer's channel because her recipes. She's an ingredient canner. And, and that appeals to me as well. I don't like making all this complicated stuff and then trying to can it all together. I like canning each individual thing um, so that you can put them together when you prepare the meal. Hey, East Tennessee Explorers, how are you? Hey, Frank Burns. <clears throat> and then our lovely Miss Mickey. I'm so jealous of her trellis. Oh my goodness. I love sure. it. That thing, sure. Thank that you. thing looks, like, looks like it could have been purchased. It's so neat and particular. And and none of, nothing I have is that particular. 
it was easy to do. Drill a few holes, put a few screws in, and put a fancy chain on it, too. Yeah? What? <laughs> <laughs> you lost <laughs> screws and drilling holes. Exactly. Oh, come exactly. on. Hey, I you can run a drill. Door. I only held it when I was told to and moved it where I was told to. I did nothing else but that. I'm not mechanical. <laughs> yeah, me either. I'm 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 real good at breaking stuff though. Yep. But um when we were talking with Miss Piglet, you know, most of you that follow me know that I have a freeze dryer. Well, <clears throat> the freeze dryer is all great and all that, but it's not the cat's meow when it comes to the only way to preserve food. Um, you know, Oxjaw had made a comment, not everybody can afford a freeze dryer, and I completely get that. But the freeze dryer is not, in my opinion, is not the only way that you should be preserving food. You should be preserving food with a combination of all three methods. And Piglet and 3D and I were talking, and Miss Mickey were talking the other night about there are things that, and I'm going to use the, the example of milk. There are things, milk, I've, I've had trouble dehydrating milk. I know you can buy dehydrated milk, but dehydrating your own milk, I've had trouble doing that. Um, and um, I don't know, I don't know anybody that cans milk. Do you? Do y'all know anybody that cans milk? What about you, moms, Mickey? Anybody? No. No, even the canned no. milk that you get at the store, it goes rancid very, very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, but I will tell you that the freeze dryer is an advantage over the other two methods when it comes to milk. Um, you can freeze dry milk and it turns into a powder and then you can store that for long-term storage in a Mylar bag. All right. So that's one, one category of food that the freeze dryer has its advantage and dairy I'm going to say dairy except for butter you can't freeze dry butter <clears throat> um, the cheeses the milks um, stuff like that you can freeze dry and take all the moisture out and it'll turn into a powder and you can store it for long term storage now everybody knows about dehydrating eggs I've done it I've done, I've dehydrated raw eggs myself, but I will, I will be the first to admit that um, I've done the research and in my honest opinion, dehydrating raw eggs is not the safest way to go as far as eggs go. Um, dehydrating cooked eggs may be a different story. But dehydrating raw eggs, there is an issue and a safety concern as far as salmonella. So, <clears throat> you know, I went through a period of time, and I think there's a video on my channel somewhere where I dehydrated a whole slew of eggs. Um, and I dehydrated them raw, followed all the directions and whatever. Well, when it comes down to it, I was scared to eat them. All right. So all of the dehydrated eggs that I had in jars, I put them in jars and vacuum sealed them in the jar. I took them out and threw them away. Um, <laughs> 3D says don't dehydrate hard boiled eggs that come out to be hockey pucks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miss Cheryl, how are you? <clears throat> But I, I will tell you that freeze drying eggs is safe. And um, I have freeze dried cooked eggs. I scrambled all my eggs together, put them in the dehydrating, I mean, the freeze drying trays, put them in the freeze dryer, and they turned out fabulous. Um, and all you have to do is add a little hot water to those freeze dried 
cooked eggs and they are ready to eat. There's no cooking needed. So that is the way that I prefer to store the extra eggs that I have. Um, <clears throat> you can freeze dry raw eggs. Um, I did that and I had a big old mess on my hands. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <clears throat> the secret to freeze drying raw eggs is to freeze your eggs first so that they don't get all over the inside of your machine. All right. That was a learning, a learning period of time for me. So <clears throat> those are things that the freeze dryer has the advantages over, but you don't have to have a freeze dryer to preserve your food. Um, Mom Slayer, do you want to talk about canning? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I would think that in my preference, I would love to have a freeze dryer. I have never, ever tasted anything freeze dried though. So it would, I Are think it would be a, yes, I think it would be a textural thing for me. You know, I don't, yeah. uh, I don't know, but in a grid down situation, your freeze dryer is just an expensive piece of machinery sitting there. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm right. envious of you, but, you know, my canner, I can throw it out on the um, the grill. Uh, That's right. You know, and still be able to can. Uh, yeah. I just literally had my husband, I, I told you about these meatballs. And mm -hmm. that they've been sitting there because I didn't want to deal with them. So literally two... Two dozen um, jars of meatballs I had to throw away, and now oh, out of oh, those no. two dozen, out of those two dozen, there were four jars that didn't open. Mm -hmm. But I'm scared of them, you know, because oh, yeah. I don't. Too. Yeah, I just made a video. I still got to edit it because I just did it yesterday. Th threw them out, but um, I don't know what I did wrong. I and there's, you know, there's still times that that stuff like this happens to me, like. You know, I, I'm okay with yeah. having jar failures every once in a while or, or thermo breaks. But right. to have my lids not seal and so many of them, and it's happening. More and more. It's happening more and more. But then again, uh, Ball and Kerr got bought out by Jordan. So I don't know. And then people are recommending, um, oh my goodness. Bernard, Bernardin, Bernardin lids now. So I, I don't know if it was something I did because there was a lot of seepage, but I didn't add, you know, I added, um, and that's another thing. I lost pints and pints of beef broth because I added the beef broth to the meatballs, mm. you know, so it's oh, even doubly a kick in the butt. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you, you got, you have to look at that, but like you said, I'm an ingredient canner. Um, I can't wait. We just started tilling the, yay me, I fixed that rotor tiller, but they just started tilling <laughs> this afternoon. And, um, that was you know, fantastic. It's, oh my goodness. She <laughs> made me so proud y'all. It's a fun time so tiller. <laughs> so, and it's yeah. going to rain for the next <laughs> four or five days. So now it's going to sit where it's at. And, but we had a hard frost. We just this week, this past week. You know, I was oh, wow. covering herbs that we have already planted, but I haven't planted big stuff yet because, you know, here we yes. generally have to oh, wait until Mother's Day. Yeah, so like wow. Mother's Day. Yeah. So, and I'm dying to get, I'm trying to get that Hugo garden. I want to see what it's going to do. Oh, my goodness. Look, I'm so, I'm so impressed with Piglet in 3D. The, now, now 3D has been um, dehydrating up a storm and she's a murderer. <laughs> she murdered her freeze dryer with the, with the bread and butter pickles. Yes. Dehydrator. It yep. How long did it take those, th right, uh, those right. pickles to process? How, what was it well, in the end? At 55 hours, um, I pulled it and they were crunchy. Um, but not as crunchy as what I would like for them to be, but yeah, yeah 55 hours I pulled it and, uh, hmm. 
then I then Piglet put on six pounds of corn, which I usually do six pounds at a time, uh, three two pound bags that fills up the de dehydrator. We started that at four, and this morning when I got up, I noticed the dehydrator wasn't running, and I went and looked at it, and it was hot, but the fan wasn't running. So I'm going to take it apart. If I can replace the fan, or maybe there's a uh, like a break, a uh, little fuse or something in there, you know, that went out. Uh, that thing has been running pretty steady for five years now. And um, wow, I every week I dehydrate probably at least five pounds of apples, um, twelve pounds of onions. Um, oh, diggers, thank you so much. Oh, my goodness, I appreciate boom. you so much. Boom, diggers. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Nina. That, <clears throat> that dehydrator goes all the time. So <clears throat> if I can't fix it, I'll get another one. Yeah. So the Hugel culture gardening method is what 3D and Piglet are doing. And the videos that I've seen... They she started look, it. <laughs> <laughs> they look fabulous. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> and I and 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 Mom Slayer, you're working on a hugo culture. Mm -hmm. Um just waiting for it to be okay for me to plant. Yeah. Mickey, what about you? Have you started planting yet? No, like mom said, it's cold up here, so we can't do anything until after Mother's Day, but I did start oh, my um, nasturtiums and oh, my, my marigolds. Goodness. That this is absolutely that looks beautiful. beautiful. This is the new one. You can see all the cucumbers coming up good. Oh my goodness! Look at there, y'all. Let middle. me let me make. Hang on, hang on, Piglet. Let me make you the the presenter so everybody can see real good. Hang on. Okay. Let me let me get to what screen I need. Maybe oh, oh there, we that is nice. there we go. This is the one uh, we did together so she could show me how. And that post right there is responsible for my injury. But <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Look at that. But, see the cucumbers back there? Mm -hmm. We got sliced and then regulars. And then the tomatoes are here. And we've already got three banana peppers. Off of two of the pepper plants, but what the whole, awesome. the whole thing's a lot. Oh, I'm so yeah. jealous. Me too. See how big it is. <clears throat> oh my goodness, that is fantastic. Yeah, that's the, and that out there you see there, that's all the squash and potatoes and uh, cantaloupe. It's fixing. Well, it's already going nuts, but when the cantaloupe gets going, it'll be covered. You won't even be able to see the top. That's the first that thing I awesome. ever saw was that bed. And I was like, oh, my God, I love it. And I watched all her videos, and it just went from there. Golly, that is fantastic. Dang. And every bit of that come from here or from the Dollar General. The lady let us have all the cardboard we wanted. Wow. Really? Yeah. So you filled up the bottom of it with cardboard? Yeah, she, you put cardboard on the bottom, right? Yeah, she put cardboard on this one. And then dead uh, limbs and stuff. Then uh, I think leaves, rabbit manure and hay. More leaves, more leaves. And then so we'll do this year and then we'll refill it up again next year before we start. Holy that macaroni. Cool. That's what that one yes. got over there was refilled. <clears throat> and it's going nuts. Even the white potatoes that we swore weren't going to come up. I noticed the other day when I was out there are as big as the red potatoes now. They're all up. <clears throat> Dang. I can't walk that far. I too. love it. It's super muddy on this one side. But see, half the bed is covered in potatoes and squash. And then the little bits of green are the cantaloupe. And if we get the rain like we're supposed to, it'll explode. Yeah. That is just making me itch to get out there. 
that's my I know name. right me yeah. too it's killing me black pot thing sort of yeah covered in green mm-hmm. the Ooh. the whole thing so it's in a pot Dang. and on the ground and everywhere it kind of went all yeah, over exactly exactly that's gonna take off if it roots if, if it's yeah, on I if, yeah I, I'm, I don't want to unroot it, but I guess I'm going to have to and just keep it in the pot. Wow. But yeah, so you can dehydrate that and keep yeah. it, right? Make tea. Yeah. I'm going to make tea out of it. But that Hugo oh my goodness. garden started it all. I love it. I love it. I was like, oh y'all, you goodness. cannot get any better than that. Uh-uh. <clears throat> No, I mean, it's real, real, it was real simple. I mean, it's not simple to do, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of hard work, but the concept is so simple, you almost feel dumb by it when you do it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> 3D. What I do with my mints is I plant them in a hanging basket, I get four or five different flavors. When I want them, I just go pick them because I have been digging out mint and giving it away for years because I made a mistake of planting it. So oh, wow. that's what I do now. I just put it in a hanging garden, a hanging basket, grab what I want when I want it, you know, and then I bring it in. I bring it in for the winter. Well, she oh. planted a bunch of different uh, herbs and a salad one bed. So, um, we're not very successful in rosemary for some reason. So uh, she's shooting for a greenhouse next year. So we'll probably do a lot of herbs and, and pots. We'll yeah. Control it a little better. Yeah. <clears throat> I need to go out there and do a video on my garden. I've got one thing in my garden that I'm not having good success with. And it's probably because I don't have... You know, all I've got around me is pine straw, right? Too much light. Um, so I have one section of my of my garden that's inside the fence that is the asparagus bed, all right? The asparagus is growing, growing more grass than it is asparagus. So... <clears throat> You know, and I know you're supposed to keep it covered to keep the grass down. Um, I haven't gotten, I don't have regular leaves around me. I have pine straw, which is not good for my garden because pine straw will take your garden out. Ask well, me how I know. Your pH <laughs> is off. If you can figure out what pH to change it to, mm -hmm. you should be able to do that with what? Baking soda. No, you can do that with garden lime, which um, it adds like calcium. It adds, uh, it lowers your pH. Yeah. Well, how how old is your bed, Nina? Um, this is the third year. Okay. Well, it, now's the time that it should be coming in. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, well, it should be. Yeah, I put two-year-old roots in the ground. Oh, but so still, doesn't it have yeah. to grow for three years? Yeah, after you planted it, that's what I thought. Because my mom and dad do uh, asparagus. Yeah, so I'm probably going to just cut everything down um, and see if it'll do better um, next year. But it's not producing this year. I was debating on taking the. Um, the asparagus bed apart, taking and uprooting everything and getting those out of there. <clears throat> but I'll give it another year and see if it grows right. Um, we'll see how it goes. But the rest of it is is planted. So I need to go um, and take a video and let y'all see what I got. The um, raspberry plants that this fella that I know, <laughs> um, uprooted some wild raspberry plants from Tennessee and sent them home with me. Well, 
Um, they made it through the winter. They've been transplanted in my garden, and they have blooms on them now. I am so freaking proud, y'all. Oh, awesome. Mm, good for you. Yes, yes. My Tennessee raspberries are, are, are going to make, you know, I hope they make. They got blooms on them, so it's all good. Yes. <clears throat> I am so excited. <laughs> and they're still alive. That's a big thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, My garden got so flooded with all the rain that we've had we've had an extraordinarily amount of rain this spring, and this is swamp land anyway. It's low lying land, so right. it's clay based, and the water just takes forever to dry up and drain. But by the time it starts draining and drying up, I get another four or five inches. You know. And uh, oh, wow. it, it's really taken its toll on on the gardens. The Hugo cultures have done the best because they're up high, they drain well, and the leaves and the the dirt that the Hugo culture produces, um, it holds moisture, but not excessively, you know. That and, is fantastic. Uh, the Hugo cultures have done the best. In this yeah. wet, wet weather. Yeah. So you've been doing all of your dehydrating with just one dehydrator, right, 3D? Yes, ma'am. Holy macaroni. You need about three of those things. Golly. Because your garden is fixing to become lush, and it is fixing to take off. And yeah. you are going to have more than you can keep up with and you need to be oh my goodness um 3d had mentioned the other day when we were talking the dehydrated mushrooms now <clears throat> i've freeze-dried mushrooms i like the freeze-dried mushrooms but is it crazy to say i prefer the dehydrated mushrooms um i like the way they taste better and it could be like you said mom slayer a textural thing um um the dehydrated to me on the mushrooms is better um but <clears throat> with all that stuff that you're gonna have coming in you will have plenty to dehydrate over there 3d oh my goodness i am so impressed yeah i'm really wanting to get a grinder a dry grinder and yeah uh, start making like seasonings um, with the different herbs and the peppers dehydrate the peppers yeah. and then uh, yeah. grind the peppers up and make like a, a pepper seasoning and bell peppers got um, yeah I, I've got a lot of plants but um, I gotta get my dehydrator going if not I'm gonna I will buy another one ASAP. Yeah. Dang it. And all the stuff. And, and so. Piglet, you. Um, Y'all went through your first canning experience over there, correct? Yeah. <clears throat> and you are. And you are good with the canning. Yeah. I even found the old school water bath. Uh, instructions for the original I don't think she realized she, what she had the original uh, 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 enamel water bath canners two of them wow you are one with the canner right <laughs> yes so when I found the water yep. bath instructions it was good because like she likes dehydrating except for green beans so I can, yeah. I can make pint green beans all day long exactly um, exactly. Double check those instructions, Piglet, because there's been a lot of advances in the canning area, and some of those could be wrong. Yeah, I got a uh, new ball book, uh, I, but I did the canning before I got it and all. So, yeah, uh, <clears throat> the tomatoes, we already know we're going to be up to our eyeballs in tomatoes. But absolutely, both of, us, both of us like diced tomatoes and spaghetti sauce and goulash and 
stew and all that. So, I mean, it's it, it'll just have to get up and hit it every day and keep going until you, you know, get it done. Absolutely. Or, Absolutely. Or cross <clears throat> your fingers and someone sells a home that they're moving out of finally. Yay. So it's going to go on the market because no one will be living in it with six dogs. Yay. <laughs> Are you talking about y'all? No, my 3D? sisters. My sisters and I own my grandfather's oh. old house, and it's worth a. Oh, okay. It's worth a pretty gotcha. penny, but they're actually moving yeah. out, and so it'll get on the market. So I'm hoping. I don't want to jinx myself, but. Right. I see many alternate means of food preservation. Absolutely. That. Absolutely. So that was the point of the conversation that we had. One is not necessarily better than the other. It's, it's the best to use all of these different methods together to preserve as much food as you can while it's growing season. Um, <clears throat> Mom Slayer and Mickey, I know y'all are waiting on growing season to make it up there, but down here where we are, you know, stuff has already been planted. I've got um, blooms on my strawberries and I'm, and I'm, this is the first year that I've grown strawberries. Um, so I'm hoping that they do well. Um, and my, my herb garden, my herb, I have a raised bed inside my fence with my, with my herbs in it. They overwintered. They never died. Um, so, um, dehydrating the herbs and um like the oregano and the <clears throat> the uh thyme and all that dehydrating it and putting it in jars um is is advantageous for those um for the seasoning blends that you can make um and um with the like the trellis that mickey did um, I've got some some grapes that I did last year. They didn't do anything last year. They didn't do anything. Believe it or not, they made it through the winter. They looked like little dead sticks sticking up out of the dirt. I mean, they were probably about, I don't know, this tall. Looked completely dead. This year, they are taken off. <clears throat> And, um, yeah, I don't have, I don't have a Mickey trellis though. I've got a, I've got to figure out a trellis system for it. So. Hey, a pallet will work something for him to grow on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could put him over there by Josh's camper and let him take up, you know, take over Josh's camper, cover it up, you know, that's an idea. Bandage on an eyesore. There you go. <laughs> Camouflage natural. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right. Um, Do what? Nina, this is 3D. I got a question for you. On those okay. uh, herb blends that you were talking about, seasonings mm -hmm. and the blends uh -huh. for the herbs, are there recipes for those or is that just a taste? You just kind of <coughs> throw what you like in there and stuff like that. Both. Well, I have seen. Go ahead, Mom Slayer. Pinterest, baby, Pinterest. Uh, I'm yeah, social, I'm not a social animal. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there, there are recipes out there, and generally, for me, I get a recipe that I think I'm gonna like. I try it out, and then I tweak it to where I love it. Okay. You know, recipes yep. just a suggestion. But yeah, yeah um, Pinterest is your best bet for recipes. Uh. And a whole mess of other stuff, but that's what I use Pinterest basically for. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we need to get on there and look up Mom Slayer. Um, the recipe for the seasoning blends, um, I haven't put, I mean, I have the stuff that I grow, but to create one specifically for a specific purpose, like a recipe, I haven't done that. Um, they're all just kind of mixed together. Um, but that would be a really, really good idea. But they're, yeah, 
the the recipes, um, and I'm with Mom Slayer. It's it's just a suggestion, a guide, a base kind of sorta to add to it what you like. Um, but I'm I'm so so jealous of that garden up over there. Holy macaroni! <clears throat> um, the cantaloupe, you know, um, freeze drying cantaloupe and watermelon um, to preserve it. It's not necessarily a um, staple food, but it is so fun and can i tell you honestly i i freeze dry watermelon and cantaloupe for fun not because it's required in a grid down or whatever it's because i like it it's like a it's like a a candy to me so that that that's the purpose and, behind the watermelon and, and that's the cantaloupe. What's good because you'll need stuff like that mm -hmm. what's the texture of that nina is it is it like a chip no, it is more like, um, I'm trying to think of how I would describe freeze-dried watermelon. Is it like a Cheeto or something? Yeah, it, yeah, like that's a it. Puff, a puff Cheeto or something? Yep, <clears throat> that's it. And it the, the taste of the watermelon and the taste of the cantaloupe is intensified. Um <clears throat> so, take for instance, um, like some things I prefer um, not canned, like asparagus, for instance. I know you can buy canned asparagus that's in the can. I don't like the taste of it if it's canned. To me, it's... it's um, too mushy. All slimy. Right. Yes. There you go. Slimy. Yes. So that is not my favorite way to eat asparagus. But freeze-dried asparagus is like a Cheeto. It is crunchy and you can eat it not rehydrated. But the taste is fantastic. <clears throat> yep. And also, if I didn't have a freeze dryer, um, the asparagus, the only way that I would like it would be um, raw asparagus that's grilled, wrapped in bacon. Ooh, mm. of course, bacon. Yeah. Oh, my kid yes. quit eating pork, and it is such, it's its crazy. I have so much pork canned up. I got pork in a freezer. She goes away. I, we we get the, cork, the pork out. Oh, my goodness. Nina, yeah. Nina, have you freeze-dried bacon? I have not freeze-dried bacon yet. And, and let me tell you why I have not freeze-dried bacon. I have no willpower. <laughs> I have no willpower So I have canned In a pressure canner I have canned bacon It turned out fantastic um, I cooked it first And then <clears throat> Wrapped it in freezer paper And put it in And I have a video on how I did that But it turned out Fantastic those are in storage at this time. So I do have bacon canned. My issue is every stinking time I cook bacon, I eat it. Like, I just can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I haven't freeze dried bacon. Yep. Yep. Have mm, not pour a little bit of maple syrup on that and freeze dry it. You just, uh. My goodness gracious! Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to um to try to force myself to freeze dry. Save some bacon. Save it to freeze dry it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I've freeze dried several different things like the chicken fettuccine. Um. 
the you know and I have my favorites some of it I'm doing to put away um, if you know if grid goes down or whatever um, because like you said mom slayer if a grid if the grid goes down or SHTF happens the freeze dryer is going to be a big old paperweight yep <clears throat> the dehydrator too well I don't know because the dehydrator doesn't pull not nearly as much power as a freeze dryer does um, so you can have a relatively small solar system um, and you know be able to dehydrate food and <clears throat> the old stories that I've heard about um, dehydrating food in a parked car you know in a grid down situation using a parked car to um, dehydrate food um, you know is an option um, there is a um, yes Oxtra said you grid down you can dehydrate in the sun there is a way to make a dehydrator out of wood and use the sun's power to do that um, but <clears throat> in a grid down the dehydrator wouldn't pull not not nearly as much power as a freeze dryer. The freeze dryer is strictly for use in good times. Um, you know, you you freeze dry it, bag it up, put it away because you're not you're not going to be able to to have enough solar power to run a dehydrator, in my opinion. And the canner is the same way. Um, you know, the canner you're not you don't have to have power to run a canner, so that's a way to preserve your food in a grid down situation um, and it's it's been going on for a hundred years you know so and Nina when when we were talking the other day I thought you had a great idea about that break um, the vacuum for vacuum sealing resealing jars because yeah as a, a dehydrator I see I put a lot of my dehydrated stuff in half gallon jars and quart jars you know and to be able to reseal those jars without using electricity um, and you might explain that again for some yeah actually yeah actually in the server uh, Prepper X brought up the brake bleeder um, <clears throat> it's a hand pumped brake bleeder so it has and I wish that I had a photo of one but the end of it is kind of sort of like the end of this pen okay the so you there's a hole when you place your um, your your vacuum seal attachment on top of your jar it fits over the top it's got a hole in the center where you would normally put the hose from your vacuum sealer and you would stick it down in that hole turn your vacuum sealer on and suck the air out of the jar um, the way that the brake, brake bleeder works is you take the end of the bleeder you put it in the hole and you've got to hold it with one hand and with the other hand pump it up to 15 psi and that will pump the air out of the jar manually by hand so <clears throat> the the brake bleeder would be a good option to have in your toolbox not to to fix your brakes with but to vacuum seal jars um, to be able to um, for food preservation to vacuum seal in the jars fantastic idea yep Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> they also come in two different sizes for your pints and your quarts. Um, those those lids. Vacuum yes. thingies that you, you yeah. I forgot to say that. Yeah, I forgot to say that. Good thinking, moms. Um 
where's the best quality mylar bags you can buy? Where do I get them? And O2 absorbers too. Um, do y'all use mylar bags, moms, Mickey or Piglet, 3D, anybody? Um, I just bought 50 pounds of flour that I have to buy mylar bags for, but generally I do not. Okay. I've got we, some that I've tried putting things in. I've got rice in the freezer right now, and I think I've got noodles in there to put them in bags. Okay. We have mylar, but I don't think well, we've I ever used it. it. Um, I did <clears throat> just buy some flour that I'm going to. I do have mylar bags, but I don't use them. And Okay. Um, I just vacuum seal and put in a, a black tote. Yeah. So I've mylar bagged quite a few things. Um, and this, this is what I've found where the mylar bags are concerned. The, you had mentioned the other day, 3D, that when you, when you vacuum seal in a bag, that if you're not careful with some of the things that you vacuum seal, the, the pasta or whatever will, um, poke a hole in your bag when you're vacuum sealing it. Yeah. So the Mylar bags are the very same way. There is two different strengths of Mylar bags. I buy both the five gallon Mylar bags and I get them from Amazon and the one gallon size Mylar bags. <clears throat> the thinner Mylar bags, I have poked a hole in those bags with my finger. That's Can why I, I tell don't use Mylar bags. Yeah. Can I tell you how mad I was? The thinner Mylar bags are not sturdy enough to do. They can do short-term storage food, in my opinion, but not long-term storage the thicker mylar bags the six mil um, mylar bags are sturdier and you would have harder trouble poking a hole in the thicker mylar bag um, i've stopped buying the thinner mylar bags um, if i'm going to buy mylar bags i will buy the thicker heavier, dutier mylar bag because it saves so much trouble and so much stress um, to have all that work done and a hole be poked in my bag makes me madder than a wet hen, can I tell you. <clears throat> so that's, that's the advice I can give you on that. Um, and... 3D had mentioned that she had bought flour to put in Mylar bags and was trying to get suggestions on how to put flour in a Mylar bag and not have the flour and vacuum seal it in a Mylar bag and not have the flour um, powder keep the bag from sealing. So did you try that yet, 3D? No, what I haven't. Um. Okay. Okay. Well, if you do, let me know. Of course, you know we'll be talking in the server, but um, make sure you let me know if it worked. Because what I had suggested for her to do is the flour when she puts it in the mylar bag. You know, you can you can fill up your mylar bag right to the rim. You know, just about it. Leave that much just enough to close it and have enough room to seal your bag but I suggested to put the flour in the bag put the put a coffee filter over the top of the flour and leave a three inch space so that you, there wouldn't be so much um, tendency for the flour to interfere with the seal when you're vacuum sealing um, the Mylar bag um, <clears throat> and 3D had mentioned about sealing the bag and 
I, I, I forget who it was that mentioned about using the iron. Um, I've used a curling, a hair straightener to close and seal the bag. Um, I think Oxjaw is the one that mentioned a regular clothes iron um, will seal the bag. And um, Kaylin Strain, when I when I sent her, you know, in the in the closure gap giveaway that FLP did, um, I sent her some mylar bags, but I also sent her a regular clothes iron to seal those with. So. Um, and I, I'm hoping that that works for you, 3D, um, so that yeah, you'll be able to preserve that flower. Yeah, the, the way the flower powder is so fine, when you put it under the sealer, the vacuum sealer, it just migrates up into the seal. And I think putting that coffee filter on the top of it and then leaving <clears throat> three inches is a great idea and I, I'm going to try that yeah yeah another thing that so I um, <clears throat> I was actually researching trying to figure out if that is going to work with doing the flower um, what you also could try it, I have another suggestion if that doesn't work okay so your 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 flower can it be put in like a Ziploc bag, um, like a gallon size Ziploc bag? Put your flower in there, zip the Ziploc bag, put that down in your Mylar bag. But there's a there's a key thing that you need to remember when you put that bag down in the Mylar bag. Take a pin. And poke a hole in that Ziploc bag so that the air can escape from that Ziploc bag. For us northern bag. people, a pin is a pin. <laughs> <laughs> you held it together so well, Mom Slayer. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. A pin. Let's take a pin. You southern bell, you. <laughs> Take a pin and poke a hole in that <laughs> in that bag so things. that the air can escape. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's a good mm -hmm. idea with the Ziploc bags. I'll have to try that because I have yeah. want to get some flour and some wheat flour and try it. Yep. That's if the other way doesn't work, leaving the three inch gap. Mm -hmm. um, because when you when you put that in the vacuum sealer, you're going to have more room. Your flower is not going to be butted up close to the sealer. So hopefully it won't interfere if you leave a three inch gap with that coffee filter over the top of the flower. So That's a there's a couple idea. of suggestions. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we're, we were going to like do some flour, but I think we're going to do this one bag and put it up and then concentrate on like Bisquick and... She likes the uh, flour tortilla mix where all you add is water to make tortillas. Yeah, matzo mix. Yeah, instead of uh, wow. a lot of flour because she, I mean, we'd probably eat biscuits or whatever uh, just as easy as making a whole loaf of bread. And so yeah. probably go that route. The only thing I use flour for is when I make gravy and... Got when I fry bacon, I got to have gravy, and so I chunk flour in there. But that's really the only thing I use flour for. Yeah. I okay, did. Did you all see Cheryl's comment? She said she uses paper bags, one cup, two cups, etc. Then uses her food saver. Oh, that's a good idea too. Yeah. Yes. Idea. Oh, that would totally absolutely. Work. There you go. Hmm. Have yes, to try that. I mm -hmm. use holy vessels, unlike our dear heart you know, <laughs> screens. We but do I too. use holy Please vessels. Don't and... tell on us. <laughs> oh, I've got squashed in the little ones. I've got onions in the bigger ones. Yeah, don't tell on us. But remember, remember what Mouse Toast said. The half gallon jars you cannot put in your pressure canner. So they're okay 
to store other things in. Uh huh. Yes. So, right. Yes. And I don't know about <laughs> star stock up since the garden is going to be producing so well. I have been trying to stock up on quart jars. And when I go to Walmart, they may only have two cases of yeah. you know, quart jars. And I'm like, well, I'll take both of them, you know. But honestly, it's like they're kind of hard to find. And I don't know if that's because everybody is going to do canning this year or right. if uh, just uh, just-in-time shipping is a little slow, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, this this is off season. Um, you know, right. they they stock for Christmas for people to do those gifts in a jar, and then they don't during the spring, and then they restock during you know harvest. And I know, you know, you Southerners have two harvests where you know we only have one. But if you go to a, a milling company or sometimes hardware stores carry them. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I get mine in a milling company. And Amazon it's, it's, has them, but if you, you have to really look to find the ones that are the right price. Yeah. We go to Menards. Menards always, always has no. all kinds of jars. We don't have Menards. Well, oh. yeah. And my thing is I don't have that here, but I did order, um, several, they had some kind of sale going on. There was free shipping. Um, they had a sale on the quart and the quart and a half jars. And really? I bet you, I, yes. Um, and there was free shipping. Now, sometimes, depending on what kind of jar you want, um, you can look on um, Walmart dot com and have them shipped to your house and if you find the kind that you want that is free shipping for over thirty five dollars so mm -hmm. I never go in Walmart without spending over thirty five dollars or under thirty five dollars so if you spend thirty five dollars you qualify for free shipping so um, <clears throat> I cannot recall right offhand what brand of jar they are. Um, I think there's several different kinds, but that may be an option as well. Uh, Anchor Harbor, <clears throat> I think it's Target, and I, the name of the Walmart one escapes me. But yeah. she, she bought all the ball jars. Off the main the main stay? That might be. Yeah, main stay. Okay. Um... I just lost it. Oh, uh, Inside Kate's Kitchen says, I get most of mine at estate or garage sales. That's a good idea, but when you do that, really look them over. You know, chips. Yeah. Uh, look for etching inside the jar because, Cracks. you know, yeah, it can cause thermal problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can get Absolutely. them around here like that, too. And I've even seen some at, like, secondhand stores, too. Yeah. <clears throat> the only um, problem we had talking sure. about it, though, was we didn't know what had been put in them before. As long as you clean them real, real good and sterilize them, they should be fine. Yeah. You know, and I, I know there are a lot of people out there that you see um, that puts the jar in the dishwasher on, on I don't know what you call it. Sanitize. Something sanitizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I am not the owner of a dishwater dishwasher. So, um, <laughs> um, so the way that I sterilize my jars is I boil them in my water bath canner. So, um, we do both. Yeah. <clears throat> but sterilizing your jars should should be good um, piglet as far as putting something in the jar I, I, I'm, I'm like Mickey I would make sure that it's really really clean before you used it 
Yeah, she and had like my... in the garage out here, and I cleaned them up and and uh, boiled them and then let them cool because we use all the water after boiling them to water outside because of the high calcium content. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my problem too. Yeah. So I know that <clears throat> um, Mom Slayer and Mickey, y'all probably don't have this this problem, but I um, I can tell you that down here um, to live without air conditioning is a problem. All right. There is a lot of condensation that comes off of your air conditioner. Like I have window units where I am. I don't have central air. Um, um, window units is what I have and they drip a lot of condensation. There is something about the water that comes off of an air conditioner condenser. I collect that water in a bucket. And I know that Prepper X has done the same thing with his central air unit. The little, you know, the little hose that comes out of the wall that drips the water from your central air. Yeah, He's it's like kept the water. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is really good water to pour, to, to keep and to pour on your plants. Don't just let that water drip on the ground and go to waste. Um, <clears throat> Yes, Pepper X. Um, catch that water that comes out of your air conditioners, either your central air hose that comes out of your wall or the water that drips from your window unit um, and pour that on your plants. Don't waste that water. That That's, that's my tip of the day. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> So I know Piglet and 3D are fixing to be rocking and rolling over there with that beautiful garden that they have. And mine is slow on the uptake, but it's planted. It's just got to, you know, get there. Um, with my with my head being buried in a book for the last, I don't know, three or four weeks, um, I was able to get it planted. And I do apologize for not not being regular on YouTube during this time, but hopefully that'll get better. <laughs> well, I mean, we're lucky in that we don't have jobs that we have to get up and go to every day, so we can totally concentrate on growing. So that's just what we did yeah. the whole time. So, I mean, we're really, yeah. really lucky. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And then Mickey's fixing to go back to school, so she's going to have that time taken away. Yeah. You know, and then Mom Slayer with Dad Slayer, you know. All that she yeah. to deal with, so it makes it, it. I mean, it looks really great, but it it just we don't we have the advantage of not having to get up and go in every day to work and clock in and all that. Yeah, <clears throat> those those um, photos of your garden. Oh my goodness, I need to I need to print those out and hang them hang them on my wall as inspiration. This <laughs> is what you shoot for. <laughs> hang them out there so the garden can see them. Yeah, there then you go. Then they know how to grow. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> See, absolutely. What's gonna happen to you if you don't start doing your business? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yep. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And the the um. Oh dang! What was it? Butternut squash. That's what it was. Yeah, three D. Um, the butternut squash that she grew last year. Are you still eating on that butternut squash? It's still good. There are some that are bad, but you know, um, the amazing thing is that I planted the seeds from those original butternuts, and they every single one of them came up. I was I was going to send you some seeds, and I was afraid to because I didn't know if they would re-germinate you know it being my first year and everything and man every single one of them came up so yeah i'm gonna send you some seeds nina you're gonna get some butternut yes 
Yes. Heck yes, yeah, send me some seed. <laughs> All right, you got some coming. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> so what do you have coming up, Miss Mickey, besides besides class? We'll go ahead and, and start wrapping up this, this chat. Um, I am so glad to have these ladies back with me. Oh, my goodness. What you got mm -hmm. coming up? Oh, not much. Just trying to get some of my other plants replanted in bigger stuff bigger pots so I can get them outside when it warms up finally. Are you still getting snow up there or frosts or cold weather? Don't say that bad four letter word. Uh, right? No, it's been getting cold. I think it was down in the forties a couple days ago, but it's starting to warm up and stay steady. Now with the rain, all the creeks and the rivers around me are all flooded. Did you catch that? Cricks, 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 baby, cricks. I yeah, I, didn't I was say, is that the same thing as a creek? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as it stops raining and warms up a little bit more, we'll be out getting stuff planted. Awesome, awesome. I can't wait. Mom Slayer, what, what you got? What you got going on up there in the in the Arctic? And the Arctic. <laughs> well, um, it's starting to warm up. It was beautiful today. Very windy, though, and we're we're getting a storm now. Uh, it, I bet you it got into the high seventies today. Um, so oh, wow. I I got uh, Roy and I were out hanging between two trees and then cooking on a grill and you know up in a park <laughs> today. So we we took a, a a Sunday. Let's just call, call it that. Um, I got a couple of videos because of, of, you know, how nice it's been. A couple of videos I'm editing now and that poor meatball video oh, broke my heart. But oh, I saw uh, X had just commented on a root cellar. I would love it if somebody has a root cellar or a spring house, if they would get that on oh. film. Because I live on a hill that I would like to build something into that hillside. And I, I, awesome. I can't, I'm not finding anything. I don't see anything on YouTube. Really? So that would be great. Yes. There's some, a man started one, but he, he didn't, he didn't go forward with any more videos. That's the only oh, one yeah. that I actually, actually saw. So yeah. that would be awesome. If somebody could post something like that, how to build one and then how to keep, take care of it as you know, it ages and goes. Yeah, my and grandmother used to have, stuff. have a spring house. And I remember as a kid, one of the grandkids' jobs was to clean the rocks. And we'd have to pull the rocks out and go over them with a brush, soap and water, and throw them back in there and stack them back up. And there were snakes in there. Oh, I, see, no. mm -hmm. I hated mm -hmm. that no. job. Cobra condas, no, can't have it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> now, on the farm where we grew up, there was a cistern down there on the side of the house that mom and dad would use when they first moved into it. And they'd, you know, hoist a basket down there and they'd have potatoes down there and carrots and eggs and milk because the mom milked her own cow. So they would use that for a lot of storage too. Hmm. Oh, wow. No cistern Dang here. It. I got a well that I'm scared to take the lid off of it because I'm scared to see what's down inside there. Even if it's still, I'm betting it caved in. Oh yeah. So piglet in 3d, um, are y'all done planning now? And all you're doing now is waiting for the, the garden to grow. Or do you have more to plant? <laughs> no, we got watermelon to get in the ground. We dropped part of a tree and, I think we got two or three more we're going to drop. We got it split and put up the one we did. So we got some more of that to clear some sunshine out for the watermelons. Oh, I wow. got sunshine. We have 46 mm -hmm. plants that took. Holy cow. Wow. wow. Imagine that harvest. I am so I'm jealous. Telling. Yes. Yes, mm. I am too. I am stressing. I am too. You're stressing? Yeah, you got to you you can either make pickles out of the rind or dehydrate the rind or make fruit roll-ups, but that's <clears> like <throat> running 24/7. See, I have a dehydrator too. So we'll probably have two going, but still. Whew. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I think you 
Go ahead. Wouldn't that make good chicken treats, though? Them chickens ain't you no didn't water. Want... <laughs> <laughs> no, um, probably, yeah, the chickens will get the rinds and stuff. But if you wanted, you could make pickles out of them. My grandmother used to do that. Yeah, I have that yeah. recipe. And I think I also have a jam, a watermelon rind jam recipe. If you're interested, I'll shoot it over. Yeah, please. Really? My, I lost my grandmother's all her recipes. And no one knows where they're at. And so all the jellies that she would make and canned peaches and everything. I mean, all that. All that information's gone. Yeah. Holy cow. I am so excited. I cannot wait to see when everything starts coming in. Um, <clears throat> you know, the look of in you <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I would be freaking out. You know, I'm telling you. Yeah, 3D's like I'm on a video piglet. I'm Yeah. Cause see, there are there's no air conditioning here. We don't live with air conditioning. So when a can is oh, starts, wow. yeah. Uh. The box fan is your are you gonna? Friend. Yeah, are you gonna do that canning outside or are you gonna do it inside? I'm wanting to build an outside kitchen, but I haven't got there yet. Um, I got so much to do; it's all on the list. Right. She's you got guys, your own yeah, honey to do list. Uh, do you have a Fiesta near you? I loved Fiesta stores when I was down there. I Fie think so, but it's all the way in Tyler. It's not close. Oh, they uh, they were selling a um a flat top BTU um gas grill like, but it wasn't a grill. Uh, really, really cheap, <laughs> under a hundred bucks. Whenever um, I was down there, card and receipt. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, I hope they enjoyed my um, Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, you're hard pressed to find them for under a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, I could kick myself for not picking it up when I was down there. Oh. Uh, for some Heck reason, yes. the, the, oven, the stove here only has one big burner. And three little burners. I don't know why. I've never seen one like it. It's a cabin. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm wanting to build a top, a top oven. And I'm wanting to build a butane stove and also a wood-burning stove um, in in the carport. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, That's a good idea, though. Cool. And that'll cool. save you so much heat. Yeah. Yep. House in the cabin. Cabins, yeah, the absolutely. Really small, and there's not much room to do stuff like that. You know. Hmm. Boy, yeah. I'd be out there all the time, man. In the winter time, I'd put plastic up and. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Be out there. We said we could, you know, like put gravel, maybe paint, get someone to come throw some concrete on it, and put uh, benches and stuff out if we end up with a group. You know. Uh, yeah, everybody just be right there, and it just be easier on everybody else that's outside the house, and not everybody traipsing in and out all the time. Absolutely. Oxtra. Yes, yes, you you can use that. You have to watch. Um, you have Your to watch pressure. the heat. Yeah, that that's what I'm thinking of. You know, but yes, you can use a turkey burner. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you call it. Or, or or we call them fish fryers down here. So <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Is she talking about a crawfish thing? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yep. Well, as far as myself, I'm going to continue on working from can to cane and try to get through this last phase of my certification. Um, and hopefully everything will go well. So, um, when I can put videos out, I most definitely will. And I am so thankful to have these ladies that are here to talk to. Um, <clears throat> they are kindred spirits and I, I'm, I so appreciate them. And, um, anyway, I think, 
<laughs> I think that's going to be it for us tonight. Um, we appreciate all of you coming in to hang out with us and chat with us. And we hope that you've gotten some enjoyment, a little bit of education and um, from, from what we've put together. And um, until next time, um, we will talk to you later and hope you all have a good week. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night Thanks for coming.